Hello, my name is John Spank. I welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground. Where I titled, I was thinking about the Underground Church in present-day China and Iran, where uh, just uh, the church is under great persecution and uh, uh, just wor worshiping God can mean uh, someone's life being taken. Sorry, I'm having trouble with this computer. I was having trouble with the mic, and I was having trouble with the fans. So hopefully, it looks like it might be working now. Uh, sometimes the fans kick on. And, and you hear it in the background. And so hopefully I got that fixed. I need to take it into the shop and be clean. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, I can have the money next month to do it, but I don't, I hate to lose the computer for a week because I'm doing videos every day. So this is my information page. I'd like to give this out and then I'll get into the gist of the video and I'll also have a start time on the video itself and what it's about. But I do this to give understanding or people an opportunity to come in here and look at uh, a lot of this, uh, that I always have the, the information page with all the scriptures written down uh, for understanding. And uh, I do not know so many people are coming to this channel. I do not know uh, what they've been taught, what they've known or shown or anything like that. So I'll just give out quick information. The definition of rapture. Is a feeling of pleasure, or joy, a state of experience, being carried away, transported, uh, translated, uh, you know, received from one place or another. I've had someone uh, say that it's a snatching away and it has to be quick, but there's other references where it doesn't say it's quick. It doesn't necessarily have to be a quick situation. Uh, a lot of times in references to it, there'll be the word quickening. Well, that's a spiritual. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it. <clears throat> it's a quick uh, situation because I'm going to explain uh, two two occasions uh, about Elijah and Jesus where they both people saw them go up. And yes, Jesus was raptured after he ascended, and I'm about to show that in the scriptures. Uh, raptured is an English word. It's not in the Bible. Some people get hung up. They don't see that, you know, it's not in the Bible. It's not there. Well, the concept is there because we use rapture for the Latin word, repair or material, which you get for the old Greek word of harpazo. And we use that because the New Testament was written in Cone Greek, the Old Greek. Same as the Old Testament is written in Hebrew with a couple areas in Aramaic. I always put out, you cannot understand the Bible with the Western mindset. You have to uh, to really get an understanding, look at a Middle Eastern mindset, uh, knowing about the Middle Eastern culture. Also, if you're born again, you cannot, uh, unless you're born again, do you have total understanding of the scriptures? I apologize. I have a lot of health conditions, and one is uh, I have a lot of ingestive problems, and some nights it's uh, it bothers me, and I'm struggling with it. Um, and my speech, I have trouble with that sometimes on my videos. <laughs> I got a lot of things here. God's working on me. So uh, as I was explaining, the uh, rapture, uh, I meant mean, the, uh, the Word of God, um, I lose train of thought because my uh, memory issues too. <laughs> a born again person has better understanding of the scripture than anybody. Uh, God, God gives us a little bit to learn the word, study the word, get in the word. You have to have an in depth study of the word to really have that personal walk. And so, but we're going to get into some references, some things in the video about some people that are very highly intellectual people, yet they're not even they're teaching against the pre tribulation rapture. I'm going to get into that. But uh, how we know <clears throat> where rapture is in the Bible, the understanding of it, of course, the word rapture is not there. People seem to get hung up about that, is uh, uh, harpazo phrases. Caught up, falling away, departed, translated, taken up, come up hither, received up, phrases like that. There are 12 biblical raptures according to the scriptures. For a long time, I put out videos saying there was 11. I started a video with eight, and Mr. Man, I always give a shout out. He reminded me about Paul and John. I forgot about them. And then my next video, I remembered Isaiah. I do have a PTSD and it caused memory problems. Uh, so it, I'm revamping everything, going over and over on my studies to be correct. But I let that know uh, out because people can know I can err. And this is about getting the word out there correctly. But at the same time, uh, you know, if we all think we're totally correct, I mean, no one's totally correct in the scriptures. We, 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 we're still in our limited bodies. In our lived in minds. And so uh, I put out the as much as I can for that. 
That's up to that person to uh, take it and study it on their own. That's what this is for, self-study. It's not to say abs I'm absolute in everything. A actually not. Uh, later, I thought about the witnesses to Christ, and I'll talk about that. And so I look at 12 biblical raptures according to scriptures. As I understand at this time, any Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, talks about he walked with God and uh, was no more. He was translated up. Elijah, 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, verse 11, Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind. And that shows you right there, no one saw any go up, but many, there was quite a few that saw Elijah go up. So yes, you can see someone go raptured up. Uh, a lot of people say it's a quick snatching of the way. That's one you know, uh, definition about it, but it doesn't always have to be quick. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, 1 through 8, went up to uh, God for instructions. Now, Jesus' ascension, this is where I get into a lot of people uh, get, a, get a little uh, crazy on me on that and because uh, they don't think uh, Jesus Christ was raptured at all. And this is where I talk about Jesus, uh, John chapter 20, verses 7, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, he's talking to Mary Magdalene. That's a picture, my, my favorite picture. My son got me a long time ago at the flea market. That's Mary Magdalene uh, putting oil on Jesus' feet. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. And I go to my brethren. I'm not sending to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. In other words, while she walked away, he was going to go up, come back down. But he told her not to touch him. Why is that? Because he had to put the blood sacrifice up in in heaven. He went. He was dead for. He went. Uh, he was dead for three days, and then he arose again. And when he arose again, she saw him at the tomb. Realized who he was, and then he told her, uh, at first she didn't recognize him, then later she realized who he was, and so he had to be up and give his uh, blood sacrifice up there. Uh, now, this is where I always talk against Ron Wyant about every video I make, just to show how a person, you can seem a real godly man, and teachings, and have a ministry, and yet be totally wrong. Uh, he talks about how he, he dug underneath Calvary, he dug in Israel for a few years, and uh, of course he claimed he found four things, and one of them was the Ark of the Covenant, and how he talked about how the blood, Jesus on the cross, went through Calvary and landed on the Ark underneath, and how he was going to bring the Ark out from underneath Calvary, but an angel told him the time was not yet not to do this. That's his story. He, stole it. he stuck with it till the day he died. I've had many people that were skeptics say, well, on his deathbed, he claimed the same thing. And I immediately look at those people and say, well, there's many people that said they killed JFK on their deathbed. I don't believe they all done it. Uh, you have to be careful of the flesh. We are not to be guarded by the heart, by the flesh in any scripture. And that's where so many people are damned. Uh, they are led by the flesh instead of the intellect mind that God gave them. Even me, someone with two memory problems, I still... Uh, uh, I'm in God's Word studying constantly seven days a week to know God's Word and be correct. And so uh, the, the Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. It was nothing for here on earth. It was for in heaven. He didn't have to put his blood on the ark here, ark of the covenant here on earth. There was no reason for it. He had to go up in heaven, put his blood up there. So that's the reason why she couldn't touch him. He hadn't been up there yet. Now later... We read in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 9, that you know Jesus comes back down it's on earth 40 days and visits the disciples, you know, and he talks to Downing Thomas. He tells Downing Thomas to touch him uh, to prove who he is. And then later we have rapture, uh, harpazo phrases, and four pieces of scripture. And yet people will argue and say it's he wasn't raptured up. Uh, we work with Acts chapter 1, verse 9. It talks about how he was taken up. Luke chapter 24, verse 51 talks about how he was carried up. Mark chapter 19, verse, I mean, chapter 16, verse 19 talks about how he was received up. Those are all hypothetical phrases. And if you look at those scriptures, he's doing something. He's, he's giving instructions. And while he's giving instructions to the disciples, he's caught up. I'm, I'm sorry, he's taken up. He's carried up. He's received up. He was doing something, and then he, something happened where he was, uh, like I said, caught, uh, 
taken up, carried up, received up. In other words, he was doing something and then it was interrupted. So if it was, it was you know, him ascending, he was stopping the ascending. Now, one person talked to me the other day and said, uh, well, they saw him go up. Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11 uh, talks about how they watched him go up. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's an ascension. No, that's a rapture. And how you know that? Because Elijah went up in the whirlwind. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. It talked about how he was taken up in the whirlwind. A harpazo phrase. Well, there was the prophets of the sons were nearby. They saw this. Elijah was with Elijah. I had to watch how I say that, my tongue twisting. But not only that, the, the, the prophets, the sons of the prophets were nearby and witnessed it. So it was witnessed. So it wasn't quick because that person said it's a snatching. It has to be quick. No, nope. no, it doesn't. Not at all. Now, Revelation 12, 5, and I'll talk more about this actually in the video itself, states, And she brought forth the man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up into God and to his throne. A lot of people agree the first part of that, and she brought forth the man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, is all about Jesus Christ. But when it says, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne, they always say that's about the pre-tribulation rapture, about the body of Christ. And I say they are wrong. <laughs> I just had a conversation with someone back on another channel, and they 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 reiterated to put the channel out today, and, and still... Uh, uh, made a point in saying that it was it's about uh, the body of Christ, the pre-tribulation rapture. If that was the case, it would say, and her children were caught up because we are children of God. Uh, that whole uh, paragraph, it's all about Jesus Christ. Uh, but the reason people don't see it is because they've been taught in churches and they go with that programming, which it's going to be videos about, how they misinterpret something because they've been taught something and they won't go against, as he say, go against the grain. I don't tickle ears here, even though people have attacked my character on this channel and say I'm a tickling of ears. Uh, not at all. As a matter of fact, I'm one who stands out of the crowd and goes against. As in witnesses to Christ, uh, Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 through 54 says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top of to the bottom to the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And graves were opened, and many bodies of saints which slept the rose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion, they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. So after he died on the cross, this happened, this took place. The veil was torn in front of the Holy of Holies, in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Why? Because of direct access. He didn't need to put his blood on the ark. Uh, so thousands of people have followed uh, Ron Wyatt and all of his lies. I'm big in the biblical archaeology review and different archaeology things, uh, sites and stuff over in the Middle East. I spend time over there. And so uh, I'm big about the stuff and all that stuff can be debunked. Uh, excuse me, my sciences. When it comes to people like Ron Wyatt, unfortunately, a lot of people do not understand. And so... Uh, some of the things about what he's done, and so they're they're misled, and that's the problem with many people, easily misled. Philip's Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, talks about how Philip, after he baptized Ethiopian official, was taken from one location to another on earth. Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12, it does not say he was taken up or a harpazo phrase, but it talks about how a door was opened to him in heaven. And so in the old Greek, it talks about, you know, there's references to going through the doorway. Uh, just like John, Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. Uh, John, was, it was told a doorway was open to John in heaven. But on the difference on that, it says, come up hither. Uh, my cat, you might hear, he's making noises outside. He's hollering for me. He's, he's been playing out there. So uh, he brought me his toy mouse earlier and laid it at my feet. So he's going to be noisy out there. Now, pre-tribulation rapture was taught. Uh, I have so much scripture on this, yet people don't see it. Uh, Jesus Christ talks about in Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 51. No one knows the day of the hour, but uh, uh, then talks about uh, as in the times of Noah, and then gets in great detail, which I'm going to get in the video about this part here, because I'm going to talk about the whole chapter of Matthew 24, uh, about uh, pre-tribulation rapture. 
And then Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, Jesus Christ talks about the parable of the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. Why? Five wise had enough oil and five foolish ran out oil. Oil represents anointing. I believe that represents the born again Christian. Uh, that's the reason why the five were able to go into heaven. In other words, go to the wedding feast, and five were not. Why? Because they were worldly Christians, carnal Christians. Um, it talks about later they came to get to the door, so maybe later they they realized their mistake or learned something, but then it was too late. They weren't allowed. Uh, a lot of people disagree with me, with me on that, but uh, that's, that's uh, how it is. Paul's doctrine is all about a pre-tribulation rapture. First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 51 through 58. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. Paul all talked about a pre-tribulation rapture even to a new again, born again believers. Uh, he was all about that. Now, a lot of people say, well, they didn't come about till the 1800s with the uh, Darby and all that, and charismatic movement. It is not. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Essenes 200 AD uh, document show uh, how they uh, talked about the pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, a lot of people that argue against pre-tribulation rapture for some reason are, are missing out on uh, Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 16. It talks about the wedding feast in heaven. In great detail, what we're wearing, what it represents about us. And taught in a couple of verses in later, it starts talking about the Jesus Christ for a second coming, how he's going to come up, come to the earth, and then how he's surrounded by his uh, army, army, and it gives into great detail exactly wearing the same thing we're wearing. We surround him as we come down with him at his second coming. And that's also second coming is about Jude 14 and 15. Jesus comes down to earth surrounded by 10,000 of his saints. That's pre-tribulation saints. When it refers to Jesus Christ coming in all of his glory, it's because we are coming down with him. And that proves as, you know, he died on the cross for us. And uh, it was all about him. We were the gift, you know, he gave us the gift, gift of grace, actually by God. So we're all his glory. It's his testimony. People don't see it. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 through 12 talks about how God will send a famine on the earth, a famine not of food or water, but it can't find the word of God. Why? Very few people talk about this. After the pre-tribulation rapture, there's a time of chaos, time of darkness that the Antichrist comes out of, right before the seven-year tribulation. Now, how do I know this is before the seven-year tribulation? Because... 100, at the beginning of seven-year tribulation, 144,000 Jewish men will have the gifts of the Spirit go out and evangelize to the world. Uh, the two witnesses, which I'm about to talk about in a minute, will uh, one be in a lot. We know one is Elijah, and the other one's either Moses or Enoch. A lot of people say it's Moses because that's referred to the to. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's Moses because it's it's also they're talking they're witnessing to the Gentiles, so I believe it could be Enoch. But a lot of people think it's Moses, but that's the time, end of the time of the Gentiles. So uh, they're witnessing, telling the gospel. And then there's an angel supernaturally, the whole seven-year tribulation, going out evangelizing. So the word's getting out there. And yet in, in Amos chapter 8, verses 11 through 12, it talks about a time in the future where no one can find the word of God. That's because as soon as we go up, all this electronic stuff goes away. These videos about Christianity and stuff, AI takes care of stuff over quickly. Everything's gone. Uh, I believe there's going to be nuclear war. What's going on with Israel? And so uh, everything changes and gets very dark on this earth. Mid-tribulation, uh, it is the rapture of the two witnesses. Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 12. They lie dead in the street three and a half days. Then are, are brought back to life, and God himself says, come up hither. Now, the post-tribulation, there's two raptures, and that's a Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 through 16. The martyred saints, uh, their souls are in the altars. They come down with us, and they'll be coming up, and they'll get the glorified body. Then as we touch down Mount Olives with them and Jesus, uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20. Also referenced by Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, the uh, wheats and, and tares uh, judgment. And that's all the Armageddon. Just like when, uh, remember I talked about how uh, uh, Philip was taken from one location on earth to another. 
caught up in the spirit, taken from one place to another. Same thing will happen with everybody. Everybody's going to come across the world to Armageddon. Uh, they're not there at the beginning of the Armageddon to fight. So they're going to come across all over the world to it. And so uh, I'll put the time here. And now we're going to start the meat of potatoes, the, the, the big uh, video here. Uh, welcome. My name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground. I titled it Underground. As I just said in the introductory part, I was uh, thinking about the uh, people in China and Iran where they can, you can use your, lose your life for worshiping God and spreading the gospel. Uh, the church has always been under persecution, tribulation, great persecution, tribulation since the beginning of the church, people. Uh, the seven-year tribulation is not for us, and I'll show that in scriptures. So what I titled this, I titled it Pre-Tribulation Rapture, Truth Against Religious Programming. Uh, a lot of people, men, are taught different things, and uh, they go by what other people teach them instead of getting the scriptures. And there's a lot of people in the scriptures. With the, I'm going to talk about three men right now that, that seem to know. The first one, not, not so much, but the other two know a lot, especially the third person, a lot about scriptures. And yet, not only do they don't see uh, anything about the pre-tribulation rapture, but uh, they talk against it. And so, and there's many people that go to channels, thousands go to channels and uh, hear this stuff from these ministers. And they, they, they're like, well, you know, I was taught that for many years in church, but now I come to understand it's not true. Uh, we are in tribulation now. Like I said, we go through tribulation. Um, actually, I didn't mark it down, but I can find it real quick just to give you an idea. Uh, I talked about in my last video. We're always under tribulation. It looks like... Uh, Washington Times article stated about uh, Sub-Saharan Africa led the world in killing Christians in 2023, accounting for 4,606 of nearly 5,000 deaths of Christians globally, according to an annual assessment by an evangelical aid mission for persecuted Christians. Assaults in Nigeria are responsible for 82% of Christian deaths worldwide, while India saw a nine-fold increase in Christian killings. Last year, according to the... Uh, Open Doors uh, Watch release Wednesday. So, uh, and that's what I used on last video. So, yes, there's persecution, and we go into persecution since the beginning. But we're not here for the seven-year tribulation. And these men, uh, they run a risk of, uh, I, I put a video out there. I, I really believe if you deny the pre-tribulation rapture, you're denying Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, if you deny me, I'll deny you before the Father. Uh, these men are pushing it out big time that uh, there's no pre-tribulation rapture and that uh, to believe this, you're, you're going against scripture. And um, it just, there's things I don't understand. You know, I don't understand how someone uh, could know so much and yet so little. But a lot of them are led by the heart. A lot of them are led by the flesh. A lot of them try to use their intellectual mind uh, at studying instead of letting the Holy Ghost guide them. And that's where I'm very strict on things. Uh, I look at things different. I believe the Holy Ghost guides people. Uh, for example, Matthew, the parable of ten virgins, Matthew uh, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, when Jesus Christ talks about the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, and I apologize, Patch is out there hollering for me. He's not feeling good today, but I was going to do the video with him, but he's all over the place in here, and uh, he wants to be with Dad. But uh, I know he wasn't feeling good, but he brought me his toy mouse and put it at my feet. I have four rescue cats I take care of. And he's the boy, the rest of the girls. And so uh, I've had him for many years. And so he's he's honoring in many ways. But uh, you're going to hear him make noise because uh, my son's in there uh, talking to my other son. So uh, they're going to ignore him. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I know they will. So it is what it is. But he's fine if you hear him out there hollering. If you hear scratching, that's the other cats. I got scratch post just out the door and it echoes in the hallway. So, But uh, Matthew chapter 25 talks about, talks about the uh, uh, five wise, the five uh, foolish. And the five wise had plenty of oil. The five foolish ran out of oil. So the, they wanted the oil from the wise. And wise said, go get the oil at the market. And when that happened, the, the groom came. They were called into the wedding feast. The door was shut. And the five foolish came back and were given access. They were denied. Why? I believe that represents indwelling of the Holy Ghost. 
Only those that are born again, truly born again, will go to God. And those who aren't born again won't. And those uh, five foolish represents the carnal Christian, the lukewarm Christian, uh, the modern Christian. <laughs> I can pick him up. The modern Christian, where they, uh, uh, they're, they're too wrapped up into this world. All right, and when we cannot be led by emotion, we're in the flesh. It's so easy to be, mis be misguided and led by emotion, but we are to be led by the intellect that God gives us. But I start out. I start out with Vila Sachuk, and he's overseas. I don't know if it's Ukraine or what area he's from. I, I forgot. I should have wrote it down. I didn't. He refers a lot to Doctor Doctor Michael Brown. They talk to each other a lot, and they're both against pre-tribulation rapture. And I was looking at their stuff, and what he was he keeps saying is Western Christianity referred to snowflakes. He's constantly calling the Western mindset about the pre-tribulation rapture your snowflake. Um, you got to be careful calling people stuff. Now, I'll say things like I'll talk about emotions, people being butt hurt. I'll say that about people being butt hurt. Uh, and that's just an uh, old coal miner saying for, you know, your emotions you're not control because people are offended. They're so easily offended today. It's 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 crazy. They're, they're just not that strong. Uh, another times I'll say spiritually lazy. In other words, those that don't, don't, uh, uh, really get into studies or spend the time studying God's Word. It's more than just reading the Bible. You've got to get into a study, more in depth study. Like a lot of times I refer to, I, I study the culture over the Middle East. I love biblical archaeology review. I love archaeology, period. I spent a lot of years. I've been over in the Middle East. Uh, that's where I, I fought a war for almost two years over there. So a lot a lot I've done, I've done over there. I've had many friends that are from the Middle East. And so... Uh, gives you a better understanding. Not that I'm an expert on everything, and, and a lot of things I have cognitive memory problems because of my PTSD, so a lot of things I forgot for, through the years. So I'm constantly working on stuff and studying. And then you have Joel Richardson. I've talked many times about Joel. He's got many books out there. This man is has knows so much about the Scripture, and yet he's, he's just really against the pre-tribulation rapture, so he's pushed it enough that uh, I think Joel would uh, it's, will have to answer to God for that, uh, to be misleading people. And so uh, I just, uh, but you don't know. That the thing is, when you have people, uh, they may seem sin sincere. And sometimes you can, you can show who's wrong and who's not. Um, for one, I talk about a lot is Ron Wyatt. Uh, Ron Wyatt uh, is misled. He's had a ministry, misled thousands of people. I didn't even know ministers have been misled by this man. And there's many reasons I could get into uh, the show he's wrong about a lot of things uh, because of the archaeology I like to study. But the one thing that I can use in Scripture and, de as you say, debunk every time is this, where he found the Ark of the Covenant. And he claims it's underneath Calvary. Now, Jesus Christ died on the cross, and the blood went from the cross through Calvary onto the ark. And then when he was going to bring the ark out, an angel saw him and told him to leave it there. It wasn't time yet. Nice story. Uh, he dug in that area for many years, and, and there's big big stuff about it. And then him and his, wife, his wife did a video. Uh, I don't think he was in it. I think it was his wife and someone else, maybe one of his sons or something, where they took the blood, and it was living blood. They made a big video about this. I don't believe any of it. And you're like, well, how can he be that way? Because I know the scriptures of God. And it talks about how, uh, I always talk about Jesus' ascension, where uh, John 20, 17, chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus said unto Mary, he talks about Mary Magdalene. You, you see back there on the picture, I have Mary Magdalene. Says, Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my, unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. And then later, what did he do? He had Downing Thomas touch him. He did, but he told her not to touch him. Why? She was going probably going to give him a hug. She realized who he was. You know, he finally uh, recognized him after he, he spoke. She was so upset because at first she didn't recognize him. But the point is this, because he had to send up to heaven first. Why? Because he had to put his blood up in heaven has to sacrifice. It was nothing to do with here on earth. It changed. He was the eighth and perfect covenant. 
It changed everything. We got to get to grace. That's the reason why the body of Christ is not here for the seven-year tribulation, people. We're in tribulation now, but we're not going to be here for the seven-year tribulation, and I'm about to prove it. Show it to you right now. But uh, there's some things that uh, Villa had said, and he talked about Western Christianity, referred to as snowflakes, only one second coming. And he talks against pre-tribulation rapture. Well, God doesn't, I mean, Jesus Christ doesn't like come to the earth. It's not a coming. Second coming. At a second coming, he will be, followed by us, come to the earth. He meets us in the clouds. It's to take us up. And I can show you that in scriptures, and I will. Not one scripture states the church will skip seven-year tribulation. Uh, I'm about to read you a whole chapter about that. Uh, this man, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to read you a whole chapter. Daniel chapter 9 <laughs> shows proof of everything about seven-year tribulation. And then he talks about Revelation 24 through 6. So I didn't write that one down. I got a lot of writing I did today on the other stuff. So I'll just read this to you real quick and show you. Because he says it's because of this there's no pre-tribulation rapture. So let's go to Revelation 20 uh, verses 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was unto them. And I saw the souls of them were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such that the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Notice it says, Blessed and holy in he, on, on uh, verse 6, that he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death had no power. Why? Because they were raptured up. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's what we do. We are to reign with Christ. The other part talks about those that went through the seven year tribulation. You know, there's judgment. And those that didn't take the mark of the beast, that's those that went through the seven-year tribulation. So, this, the, you know, it's it's not really, it's reading the scriptures, but not looking at the scriptures. And the one scripture that all these men seem to mislead, uh, Joel Richardson talked about there's nothing, especially in Revelation, that talks about uh, pre-tribulation rapture. Well, I would argue with the man. Uh, what about Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 16? It talks about the wedding feast in, in uh, uh, heaven. The wedding feast describes what we're wearing in great detail. Then it talks about Jesus Christ getting ready to come down for a second coming. And he's surrounded by his army and it gives a great detail of what they're wearing. And what? The same thing we are because we're part of his army. You know, it, it's just like, wow, you, you, you talk about skipping and twisting of scriptures that these men talk about. But then they're skipping things around themselves. And so let's get into this. Uh, the church the church is not purified by enduring the seven year tribulation. The Jewish people are. That is Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 through 27. In the first year of Darius, the son of Assessorus, of the seed of the Medes, which is made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books number of years where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that was accomplished 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face upon the Lord God to seek my prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, who spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. And, Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces at this day. To the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel that are near, and that are far off through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to, belong, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses through we have rebelled against him. In other words, they're rebellious. They came out of Egypt. They stayed being rebellious. They did idol worship and everything. Many times God showed them correction, and they would not be corrected. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in the laws which he had set before us by his servants the prophets. 
Yea, all of Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curses are poured upon us, and the oath that was written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. God cursed them. He did not curse the body of Christ. He cursed the Jewish people. And he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges, the judges, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as done hath been done upon Jerusalem. And as it is written in the law of Moses, as this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand the truth. So they still, they're not, they could. Daniel's pleading about his people, but they're not going to God in prayer. They're not asking for the forgiveness. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all of his works, which he doeth, for he, we obeyed not his voice. And now our Lord... Our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned, as, as this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger of the furry be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, the holy mountain, because of our sins, and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, our God, hear the prayer of the servant and the supplications, cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, incline thy ear and hear. Open thy eyes and behold of our desolations in the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but after thy great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, my God, for my thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking, praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, I'm representing my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking the prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening obligation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Now he's going to explain what he had saw the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgressions and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. And the street shall be built again on the wall and in even tribulous times. It's talked about it's going to be seven years. And three and a half years in, it's, it's going to be totally built. And after three score and two weeks, three and a half years, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come, they shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And to the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the obligation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, she shall make it desolate even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured unto the desolate. That's talking about the Antichrist. That last paragraph is talking about the total amount of the seven-year tribulation. The other two is, is splitting in a half, the first three and a half, and this last three and a half. We know when Jesus Christ comes at his second coming. As soon as the Antichrist confirms the covenant, seven years later, Jesus Christ comes that day. When he goes, the Antichrist goes in and does the desolation, desecrates the temple that day. That's also the same day the two witnesses in uh, Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 12. One of them being Elijah, the other one either being Enoch or Moses. They will uh, for, lie dead in the street three and a half days. They'll be brought back to life that day. They're brought back to life. And then God says, come up hither. It's the exact same day the Antichrist walks into the temple. All right. That's the end of the Gentiles age. And then three and a half years after that day, Jesus Christ comes. Now, why I stress that is because I've talked to two rabbis over in Israel over a year ago. I was had a conversation and they were talking about how Daniel chapter 9 verses 1 through 23, they look at, but they don't like 24 through 27 because no, they don't. They are. They do believe their, their Messiah has not come yet. But they believe that, that that second coming is the first coming of the Messiah. And they, that gives them the day. And they don't want to err. 
So they don't want to use 927, um, 924 through 927. They don't like that. I have other references to that about that where rabbis are saying the same thing. I have through the, uh, also I have a, a, the Complete Jewish Study Bible or the Israel Bible. One of those two says the same thing, uh, what the rabbis told me. So yes, they, they, they don't like to look at that because they can know the day, which they think it's the first time the Messiah comes, or we know it's the second coming. And I stress that because in more in the scripture, I'm going to show you some other things. So the church is solely complete, is purified solely by the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I recommend reading John chapter 17, verses 1 through 26. It's all about uh, that Christ did on the cross for us. The church being under the gift of grace only and not the Jewish people who face being martyred to be with God unless they endure to the end of the seven year tribulation. All right. It, it's, it's, not, it's not a complex thing. Uh, we are under the gift of grace. We're totally different. We don't have to be here through the seven-year tribulation. Now, when Jesus talks about us enduring to the end, uh, there's different times you have to distinguish, and I'm about to get in. Matthew show you different ways to distinguish where he's talking about one subject to another. There are times he, tell, he tells the, the apostles you have to endure. Why? Because they all were tortured. Uh he talks about referral to the Jewish people that they're going to have to endure to the end through the seven-year tribulation. We're going to face tribulation in our lives. Of course we're going to face tribulation. And like I said, the, the true body of Christ is going to be in a great tribulation the whole time. But we're not here for the seven-year tribulation. That is not for us. That is set aside for the Jewish people only. Now, some Gentiles will be saved during that time because they've not heard the gospel and they had the opportunity the first three and a half years to preach to and that they come come to uh, believing in Jesus Christ, they have to keep from taking the mark of the beast and they can endure through there too. Or they be martyred. Same thing like the Jewish people. The Olivet Discord. This gets more people tripped up at so to speak than anything. Many ministers, many people. Uh... This uh, man, I, I mentioned, especially him, because he talks about the, all the discord. Um, I'm sorry, it's name. Vlad, Vlad Shachuk is big about this. He says it's not about, you know, the last part of it, it's not about uh, uh, verse uh, 36 through 51. It's not about pre-tribulation rapture. Joe Richardson is big about saying that it's not about pre-tribulation rapture. Well, let's, let's look at it and see. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 through 51. My last I'm going to talk about. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples come to him for, to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, that there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, disciples came up to him privately. You understand the Mount of Olives is right here. You have all of Israel, right, uh, Jerusalem right here. You have the Temple Mount up here and down here. Now, as you go, people in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, there's things done. Uh, there's uh, Bob Knorky. I'm sorry, I was trying to think of who he was. Made a big, dip, uh, big difference, wrote a book talking about how the temple was in the city of David. That's where the temple was. And he pushed the, the, the big thing he pushed was about the Roman Legion and the Temple Mount, because that Temple Mount is 36 acres how the temple wasn't up there. Understand, people, it's not just a temple. You have the temple, but you have things with the temple, buildings. That's what Jesus Christ is talking about, all these buildings. There's about six buildings that surround around the temple. It's involved with the temple that are made to house different things. So it's not, there's one main building, but people get the concept, they think of a church, one building. No, there's many. And so you're telling me our God, who's a jealous God, is going to put something down in a valley where all the other pagans were up in, up here. You know what I'm saying? I don't think so. Another thing is, David had bought the threshing field. Threshing field is not in a city. It's where you throw up the wheat and it separates as you do your farming. It's got to be up high. It's got to be got to be in, in areas. Like my grandfather was a farmer, and he had certain areas. They had certain things up in high and low areas. Because he had uh, 42 acres of wood and then a lot of pasture area and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and fields and stuff. They're, they're, it's different areas. And so, but his biggest argument is it's because they show just a little bit for the San Antonio, I mean, 
Port Antonio, whatever, I'm sorry, I'm not referring to it. There are times when Romans come in, and there you go in biblical archaeology, they come in in certain areas, and they build bigger, and in certain areas they like bivouac and do different things around it, but they don't really in interact with the, the main structure. So, uh, no, I mean, that's the only argument he has. He talks about the Gihon Spring, a lot of water coming up. Yes, a lot of water is used in these ceremonies, a lot of water. We're talking thousands of gallons. But underneath the Temple Mount, there was huge cisterns, uh, very large, that were uh, three of them. They were led by aqueduct, oh, three, three and a half miles away. They went down uh, down to the uh, Temple Mount and had the stuff there. So if you really get into it, research. But he's fooled a lot of people. And I, I believe he means well in what he's doing, but I, I disagree. And because you, you get that we have concept. And that's the problem with some people is they try to put things out there and then they they, they confuse people, do things, and, and that's what this is all about. It's it's uh, religious programming, so to speak, people. They, they put things out there and they mislead people. So how do we know the Word of God? How do I know the Temple Mount? I don't think God's going to be down here. He's going to be up here. And it talks about his mountain. Well, that's the high area. And so the Mount of Olives is up here, and you're looking across down everything. He's talking about all that stuff there. And Jesus answered and said, And take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And shall hear wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass before, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and the end shall come. That's talking about the whole seven-year tribulation from the time of now up to the very end of seven-year tribulation. Then it gets into, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, that's halfway through the seven-year tribulation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them be in Judea, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. When I was in Iraq, a lot of times some of the flat houses, people would be on the roof. Why? Because it's colder at night and the building's hot. That's what it means by some people in certain areas are going to be on the roof. Instead of going down and grabbing what you can belongings, you need to go. That's how quick things are going to happen. It's going to be a, a major uh, war that's going to destroy the city of Is uh, Jerusalem. A battle when it talks about a flood. When it talked Daniel, it said a flood coming. That means a, la a vast army. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Neither on the Sabbath. Why? Because it's Sabbath, nothing's moving. In the wintertime, be hard because they're going to be on foot. They're going to run Petra. That's where, in Jordan, that's where they're going to go. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Except those days shall be shortened. There shall be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, a lot of people try to say, well, instead of seven, and a half, seven years, it's turned into three and a half years. No. Is seven years. When he talks about the day shortened, it means that your daylight will be shortened. The, the sun getting dark. They're not killing at night, they're killing during the day. So he's shortening the days to save people. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here's Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and prophets, and shall uh, show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the angels be gathered together. Immediately after tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. See, another reference to the sun being dark. And the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, great things are happening. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the heaven with power and great glory. I believe that's when he comes with the pre-tribulation rapture saints, which I'm going to get into more about that. 
And he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. So he's grabbing people. Now, if you get into my introduction, I explain the 12 uh, biblical raptures according to scriptures. There's many raptures. And that's the reason why people get confused. Because they rapture, they think, oh, there's a pre-tribulation rapture. No, there's a mid-tribulation rapture. No, there's a post-tribulation rapture. Well, actually, Enoch was raptured. Elijah was raptured. Isaiah was raptured up for uh, uh, instructions and came back down. Jesus ascended, then came back down, then was raptured up. And I'll explain that in a minute. Witnesses to Christ in Matthew chapter 27 talks about those that were dead in Christ came out after he died on the cross. A lot of people don't know that. I'll read that to you. Matthew chapter 27, verse 51 through 54. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And graves were opened, and many bodies of saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. They all knew at that point they killed the Son of God. Now how long those people lived before they went back and they died again? I don't know. They might have lived five more years, 20 more years. We have no idea. It doesn't say. But that's interesting. That's the only verse in the, the Bible that talks about that. So uh, Philip Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. He was After he baptized the Ethiopian official, he was taken from one location to earth to another. That is what the reference is here. When he says he, when Christ sends out his angels, there's going to be two raptures at the end of the uh, tribulation, seven-year tribulation. We're coming down with Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 through 16, my martyred saints. Remember the souls are in the altar? They'll come down with this. The martyr, the bodies will come up, and they'll, they'll get the glorified bodies in the air. And as we touch down Mount Olives, all with Jesus Christ, Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20, and uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13, 24 through 30, talks about the, the wheat and tares, separate the wheat and tares judgment. It's all to Armageddon. Just like when Philip was taken from one location on earth to another, Everybody all the world's going to bring brought to Armageddon. His angels are going to go out and bring them back over there. Why? Because there's people in remote areas that, that are not even involved in the battle. They're, everybody on earth is going to come to Armageddon at that point for judgment by Christ. Now he gets into the, the fig tree parable. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So at the end, this is verses 36 through 51. I, I show, I talk how this shows a pre-tribulation rapture. It's what Christ is talking about. Look at the description. It's a description of another moment or event. Now he gave you great detail about his second coming. I'm all for that. But listen to this. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. We do know the second coming, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. We can pinpoint the second coming, but this is something different. This, you know, I'm a, you know, I say it's going to be pre tribulation rapture, and you got many people looking for it, and that's wrong. These people looking for the day and the hour, you're not going to know it. But as a day is no word, so shall also the coming of Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They don't know it. They're taken by surprise. They didn't know. They were taken on the ark, door shut, and all of a sudden started raining. They didn't know. But yet we know his second coming. We know the day. Here, Jesus Christ himself says, You're not going to this event. This moment, no one will know the day or the hour. But yet, his second coming, we can know the day. We don't know the hour, but we have two references for today. Seven years after anti Antichrist confirms the covenant of many, and three and a half years right after he walks into the, the temple and desecrates it to the day. Yet this, we did, but people don't see it. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. Then we're given a warning 
Another warning by Christ. Watch therefore you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Another warning by Christ. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And he says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, with whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? I use this in reference to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1-11. through 11, How we know the, the time of the seasons. Because we know we're in that time. We're in that season right now. I push that on all my videos. You know, we're in the Psalm 83 war. A lot of people don't see that. I see it. 7 October 2023 started the war. It's going to escalate. It's not going to end. This war is going to get nuclear. After we go up, it's going to be a nuclear situation. After that, there's going to be a gap of time. How long it is, I don't know. Antichrist comes out of that darkness. And then the seven years tribulation will start. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing. Now, where it's talking, meat in due season is scriptures. When it talks about milk and meat, it refers to scripture. And in due season, I believe it's referring to in that time, like right now. I'm talking about the pre-tribulation rapture. These men I talk to you don't talk about pre-tribulation rapture. They're going to answer to God for that. What happens to them, I have no idea. I don't think God's going to like you denying him coming for his bride. Verily I say to you that he shall make him ruler over all goods. We are rewarded. God gives us rewards. But if that evil servant shall say in my heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the, in other words, live worldly, that Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and point him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Any time in the scripture you hear weeping and gnashing of teeth, it refer, it's referring to hell. So those people are going to hell. All right, so this is why I take this very serious. I don't play around with it. There is a pre-tribulation rapture. I warn those men that the uh, lie shah, shah, saw Chuck. I, I don't mean to mispronounce his name. I apologize. Dr. Michael Brown, especially Joel Richardson, he has put books out against pre-tribulation rapture. He's firm against it. I know warn these men because uh, they will have to answer for or misleading. Now, there are times when, uh, for example, religious programming, uh, I refer to uh, New News by Ross. I love his channel. I put something on his channel the other day we disagreed with, and he, he made, uh, today he did a video, and he shows this disagreement has nothing to do with uh Let's put it this way. We're both born again. I really believe it. And we're going to see each other in heaven. I'm going to meet him in heaven, shake his hand, and we'll know which one of us is correct on the matter. That's it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing that takes away. I recommend looking at his channel. I really do. Uh, he's probably one of the highest channels I, I refer to. Uh, like J.D. Farag, Pastor J.D. Farag. I always refer to him big time about going to his stuff. Um, and I don't want to disagree with J.D. It's not like I find I try to pinpoint things. I just see things different, and this we're brothers in Christ. Uh, but one thing he talked about is Revelation chapter twelve, verses five. And he's talking about the other day, so I, I sent him a thing about it. Then he talked about it today, and add again. It says, and she brought talking about, it, of course, she being Israel, because it talks about the birth, the woman giving the woman giving birth, and she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, this is where I get into uh, programming. You're, you're in church all your life, and you get these ideas. You're listening to ministers, and you're not getting the scripture. Uh, like I said, I'm not taking away from Ross. He has now, actually, he has better knowledge on me on a lot of things. I just see this one issue different. And he says this is about, talks about Christ, and then it talks about yeah, the pre tribulation rapture or the body of Christ. I don't see that. It says, and she brought forth a man child who was a rule of all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up with God and to his throne. It's talking about Jesus. If it was talking about the body of Christ, and it, it would say, and her children were caught up because we're children of God. And the reason why you, you I'm making a big deal about this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't take away everything. I don't, I don't think that's about the pre-tribulation rapture. But the reason it's a prime example of what people are shown, 
Jesus' ascension, John chapter 20, verse 17. I, I read it before. I'll read it again. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. He had to go up and put his blood up in heaven like I talked about. The reason why I mention that is later there's hypothetical uh, phrases. That's how we know. Rapture is not, not in the Bible, yes. The rapture is English for the Latin word repair or rapturo which is for the Latin word harpazo, because the New Testament was written in Cone Greek, Old Greek. And we know by where harpazo was, was by English phrases, caught up, falling away, departed, translated, taken up, come up hither, received up. Well, Acts chapter 1, verse 9 says Jesus, uh, Jesus was taken up. Luke chapter 24, verse 51 says he was carried up. Mark chapter 16, verse 19 says he received up. And of course, Revelation 12, Chapter 12, verse 5 says, caught up. I believe Jesus Christ was raptured. He ascended himself, went up, came back down for 40 days. And, and how you know this is by reading the scriptures. I refer for you to, to read that because every time it talks about in Acts, Luke, or Mark, he's talking to his disciples and then he's, he's taken up, then he's carried up, and he's received up. In other words, he's doing an action and all of a sudden he's gone. Or they seem going up. Uh, someone referred to me on uh, Ross's uh, new news, said, well, you're, you're wrong because uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, they see him going up. And rapture means a snatching up. It's quick. And what I've put in response to that person, and I'm not trying to be, you know, we learn, is Webster's Dictionary, Oxford, and you go into uh, Wikipedia, you go into Encyclopedia, Britannica, and all the different, I research all this stuff. But when you go into all this different stuff, it's not all the same many. Not always is a rapture. The definition uh, the definition I find the most is feeling of pleasure or joy or state of experience of being carried away, transported. But it doesn't say quick, quickly or slow. Well, how can you know it could be slow? Elijah chapter 2 verses, I mean, I'm sorry, Elijah 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. Elijah taken up in the whirlwind. That's a harpazo phrase. He was taken up. He was raptured up. Uh, so Elijah, everybody agrees, he was up. But uh, realize that the, the prophets, the sons of the prophets watched it. Elisha was with him. They crossed the Jordan, but they were watching from a hill far off. They saw him go up. So it wasn't a quick thing. It can be. Uh, Philip, Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40, he immediately quit, went. Because the Ethiopian... He lifted him out of the water. He's baptized. And all of a sudden, he's gone. I was quick. But Elijah, they saw him go up. So, yes, when they saw Jesus Christ go up, I, I pretend that is the rapture. But how you go against that and what's the big deal is if, if you're brought up in church and, and you've never been taught he was raptured, that's not true. He has ascended. No, he ascended in John chapter 20, verse 17. The others are apostle phrases. The ascension is not a apostle phrase. He was telling her he was going to go up. He was in control. And yet, like I said, go over those scriptures again and read it. Read it with an open mind. Read it and look at it. Study it. He's doing something and all of a sudden he goes up. He parted away from it and was gone up. Especially in Acts chapter 1, uh, 9 through 11. Talks about how he was talking to him and he was parted. It says he was parted away and then taken up. So he was in the process of doing something and it was taken away from him. So, yes, I believe Jesus Christ was raptured, too. Why? Because God shows things before it happens. When uh, Philip was raptured up, it shows about how at the end of the seven-year tribulation, there's going to be a rapture of everybody to Armageddon from all over the earth. There's, there's different things. But in here, like I said, I, I showed you about uh, where they look at, where uh, all the discord is about, all about the seven-year tribulation. The second coming in great detail, detail, the fig tree parable, the last generation. Then it immediately goes into a different event, and that is the pre-tribulation rapture. These people can't see it. I don't know why Vlad shot, took Dr. Michael Brown and Joel Richardson. Can I see it? Dr. Michael Brown talks about it a lot of times for many years. He believed it, and he doesn't see it anymore. And I honestly don't know why. I, I cannot answer that. But I know during that time, so that's what this whole channel is about. Warning people during that time, get straight in the right scriptures. I believe in the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Now, do these men have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost? 
I don't know. Are they born again? I have no idea. They're very good at the scriptures, but yet they're misleading a lot of people. Some, you know, I had someone on a different channel attack me and attack my character because of a few things I've said. And then he was coming on saying, I don't back everything up the scripture, and then we back and forth emailing. That's personal. Then it got bad, and he's really attacked my character. But it came out of a statement of uh, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, where I was talking about how I talked about the virgins and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, and that's the reason the five foolish things like that's not true. And I said, Yes, you could believe in Jesus Christ and be damned. Oh, no, that's not true. Well, yes, the lukewarm church, carnal Christians, you know, worldly Christians, they love the world more. Yeah, they know, but they, or it's not in it, you know, it got their heart, but didn't get here or whatever. You know, and they could be very active. That's what I believe Matthew 25 is all about. It shows five women being very active. Virgins is purity. They were pure, and yet they were involved too much probably with the world. And that's the reason why they didn't, you know, they didn't have the total indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And so uh, I don't know. There, there, it causes so much distraction. Uh, Satan is not at the bar doing stuff. He's in the church. He's in the the people around the body of Christ. I can't. I don't. He can't be in the body of Christ. So that's the reason why I'm like I question things because if you're born again, you're not going to mislead people. You have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. It would eat at you if you were teaching something incorrectly, it would eat at you. Holy Ghost would be saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. Yet these three ministers are talking. I don't know if Joe Alstein considers himself a minister or just a, a, a well-informed man in book writer, but the other two are ministers, they say. But it wouldn't It wouldn't be there. See what I'm saying? That's like a priest in a Catholic church. There's nothing godly about the Catholic church. Yet they you know, put things out there. And I have friends that are Catholic. I talked to my best friend today. He's Catholic. Uh, uh, he's a brother to me. But at the same time, he's lost. He's Catholic. I don't believe. I used to say, well, those there's there's people born again, saved in the Catholic Church. And I realize now as a motor, no. Because if they were born again, they would be pulled out of the false doctrine. And that's my point I'm trying to make here. You're not going to teach a false doctrine. You're not going to be involved with the false doctrine if you're truly born again. All right, uh, that person that, that attacked me on this other channel, and we had a disagreement. Was attacking, saying some stuff about my son, and said some other things about some other videos. Uh, and I, I may have even said, "Well, if you have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, why are you acting this way?" And then that really started everything. But uh, the point is this: the road to hell is wide and easy, and the road to heaven is narrow. And easy. There's no obstacles at either road. And yet very few go to heaven. Why is that? Uh, I don't claim to understand everything on this channel. I, I really don't push that. Uh, I am limited. My health is getting worse. Past year it's really getting worse. My cognitive memory is so bad that uh, last month I turned in, even though I was having financial trouble too. For people just new to this channel, I had a tree fall in this house over a year ago. Did a great deal of damage, uh, cost $80,000 worth of work, and the contractors just basically fixed the roof and took off. And so I had to get other contractors in. I didn't have a mortgage on it. I mean, the house was paid for, so I got a, luckily I was blessed to get a mortgage. But I had other contractors come in just to, I had to redo all my gas pipes, water lines. And I lived one winter in here, part of the winter without heat and everything. But uh, you got to do what you got to do. So it put me in debt. I'm still in debt. I'm trying to get out of debt from that. Uh, because the insurance company messed me up on some stuff since they got a, a finished date by the construction company and they didn't follow through. I had all this backed up insurance. I'll say who the company was, State Farm. I had everything backed up that they would they would pay. I had like $30,000 living expense and all this stuff because I always kept insurance. And they said, well, no, the way our policy is, they gave you an end date. What's well, not done? Well, we're sorry. Really? So that means I got to live out, you know, I'm living in a hotel, so now I'm at pay out my pocket, and I'm a disabled veteran. And so, uh, you know, limited. I get paid once a month. Yeah, it was just, oh, just everything was just horrible. It's been a rough year. My wife and I separated. That's a blessing. Uh, you say, why would that be a blessing? Because the trials and tribulations that you go through brings you together or pulls you apart. Jesus Christ come on this earth to separate father from son, mother from her daughter, daughter-in-law from mother-in-law, mother-in-law 
from daughter-in-law. I did a video about that. Uh, yes, he's about loving the family, but everybody's wishy-washy and and they're not really in the scriptures. Uh, we are not to love anybody more than God. And so uh, some things are rough and happen. Uh, my health is, is really bad. I have a lot of kidney surgeries. Uh, my memory, just it's so bad that, like I said, I turned the truck in because I couldn't afford it. And at the same time, I'm not struggling paying for it. And also, uh, I'm getting lost. on If I drive too far out of town, I just can't I can't do it. I get lost. My memory on it. Uh, so it is what it is. And everybody has PTSD, knows exactly what I'm dealing with. Like I had someone attack my character. I'm such an angry guy. Yes, absolutely. I'm a combat veteran. I've seen a lot of war. So, yes, I have a lot of things I deal with. And they talk about me being a very violent man. Yes, I am. I am a very violent man. I got my knuckles. I have a, a wing chunk dummy in the other room to help calm me. Sometimes I go in there and just beat up that dummy. <laughs> I never do that and hit on somebody. And for a while, I was on a me I'm just medicated to calm myself. Anybody has PTSD, deal with that. You, you, you get wound up. You get the energy. It's, it's there. It's there. Uh, you hear things at night when you try to sleep. There's a lot involved. But people are so judgmental. And I had, I upset this man's other channel. I thought he was a Christian brother. And everything happened after that. And then it was like, why are you attacking me? Sending me emails. I'm like, where am I attacking you? And I'm praying for you, brother, and caring for you. And I'm like, but you're the one that starts saying the negative stuff. You're the one that's doing all this stuff. That's just, that's people. That's what you got to deal with. So I just don't answer that stuff anymore. But my point is, and I still, he's on my prayer list. I I don't take him off my prayer list. He says he's praying for me. Good. I'm praying for him. Uh, we leave it to God. And you're going to have disputes. Even the apostles had arguments. Paul and, and as Paul and Mark or Paul and Matthew got into a big argument over one people following. And they departed <laughs> because they argued about it. And I believe it was over Barnabas. I'm sorry. My memory's not that good. Uh, he didn't help him at one point. They needed help. Didn't help or something. And then uh, later he wanted to come back and help more. And it's like, no, we, no, Paul didn't have trust in him. And Mark or Matthew, I think it was pretty well, I think it was Mark, but could be wrong. I apologize. Uh, wanted to, to come back in the group and Paul disagreed and he walked away. So, uh, and Tibbet, real quick, uh, Saul never changed his name to Paul. Many churches, many people say that. Show me in the scriptures. He did not change his name. Timothy started referring to him as Paul instead of Saul. Why? Because he was from Tarsus. He was a Paulite. All right? That's what they're called from that area. And so they used Paul. They preferred to use Paul instead of Saul because they all knew who Saul was. But it, it, it nowhere in the scriptures does it say he changed his name from Saul to Paul. I've talked about that. I've had, you know, I used to talk a lot of times because I that's what I was taught. And that's my whole point about pre-tribulation rapture truth against religious programming. You hear things throughout and you're grown and you, you learn these things and you're taught these things in church. But a lot of times it could be just a minister saying something that clicks. Oh, it must be true. And it's not. You need to get in scripture yourself and have that personal walk. And I believe that's just why so many people are missing it. They don't have that personal walk. And that's what God wants. It's got to be personal. It's not just a few minutes of reading the Bible a day and that's it. That is nothing. Just reading, you know, because you're not making it personal between you and God. This takes me a long time. This this is all about God. And that's why I do this. And to bring and work for the kingdom. Because I, I still believe any moment we can go up. We're up before this war is over. Where there's a, there's a, a law on the fire fighting here and then a law here. They're going to go in Rafa. Prime Minister is going to go. The only reason he's holding back is he's already been threatened. The United States is planning all sorts of stuff. They're probably planning another coup. How can you say that? Because we have a history of it. Go back and research. We're not a godly nation. We put out like we're a godly nation. We never was. God used us for great things. We are not a godly nation. And those ministers that put out, oh, our founding fathers were all godly. No, they were not. But yet they put that out. George Washington was a 33rd Degree Freemason. You cannot be a Freemason and Christian. I'm big on that because I had an uncle that worked in the ministry, and yet he was a Mason. And we would argue all the time because I said, that's not true. You can't be that way. And Because Paul talks against secret societies. God bless you. 
hopefully this motivates you and uh, it's not too long winded and gives you, uh, uh, like I said, in that, that directory, I've got all kinds of scripture in there you can look at. And hopefully someday we'll meet each other in heaven.